last time I can feel that burning deep inside Gonna give it all I am Gotta feel that power in my hands The beat of the drums rushing through my skin Leicester began their championship defence against their old foes Newcastle and fired a warning shot to the rest of the league. And Leicester blew the Newcastle Eagles and they've won this game by 23. The Riders have continued to impress, but tonight they go against an unpredictable Eagles side, desperate to hit back and show us their own title credentials. Wheeler drives in, drops it off to Mo Walker. Crandall to the spin. Oh, man! You're live from the Morningside Arena as the Leicester Riders host the Newcastle Eagles. A true heavyweight clash with the two most successful sides in BBL history going head to head in the championship for the second time this season. A very good evening to you. Good to have you with us. We're hoping over the next few hours we can distract you just a little bit from everything that is going on outside in the world to get you feeling a little bit of that Christmas spirit. Delighted to say the Sheffield Shark skipper Mike Tuck alongside me. I know you're feeling the Christmas spirit just a bit. Mike, what better way to get set for the best of season than Friday night basketball? That's it. No matter what's going on in the world, we've, we've still got basketball here in front of us and we've got two of the, of the best teams in the league going at it. Traditionally, over the last 10 years, this rivalry has been built up, and we'd love to see it here right at the right moment. The Leicester Riders, obviously, top of the league. The Newcastle Eagles still finding their, 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 their footing, but what if there was a night to do it, it'd be tonight. You know what? In particular, I'm loving this new setup because it's probably the only time this season I'll be at the same height as you. Uh, <laughs> I'm, still, so I'm enjoying that. Now, we mentioned that you still going strong with the Sheffield Trucks, and a decent start to the season for Sheffield. So you must have one eye on that little trophy right there. Yeah, well, 100%. Silverware, silverware is always the goal for us. Um, a good, a solid start from us. You know, a couple, couple little losses that we wish we could take back. But I'm, I'm very confident and, uh, and happy with the way we've started this season. Leicester, very much the gold standard. Of course, the team to beat once again this season. The defending champions in blistering form. I'm guessing they're not going to be feeling too much generosity uh, and a giving spirit tonight against Newcastle. Definitely not. You know, Rob Padanostro, their coach, has got these guys focused focused and, and locked in and they just look like the team to beat right now you know obviously undefeated in the league they, they've they've you know managed to escape a couple of really tough games and 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 that's what it's going to take they're setting the standard for the rest of us you never quite know what eagles side is going to turn up right that's it that's it you know the, these eagles like we said before they're they're struggling to find their footing early on here but then we've seen them show up in games like they did against the lions where you know fletcher just took the team on his back and, and made it happen so this eagles team is not one that you can write off and like I said, I think that they're due for a big game, so hopefully we'll see one tonight. We're going to key in on some of the big matchups, get into some of the keys of the game in just a bit. But first things first, we want to draw attention to a major, major moment in British basketball that went down this week. Congratulations to the London Lions women's team after their historic win midweek in Europe against Bourges, one of the real powerhouses in European basketball. How big an achievement is this, man? It's, it's massive, massive achievement. They're, they're setting, the, setting the standard for women's basketball in this country and just a historic win for, for the London Lions team and, and just a, a huge shout out for women's basketball in the UK. How inspirational can that victory be in the performance of the Lions women's team be for a whole new generation? Exactly. That Not only does it affect the, the people that are watching right now, the people that are playing right now, but that echoes for generations to come. And, and, and you know, young women are around the country watching them win that and, and thinking, hey, that could be me one day. All right, time to check in with our commentary team for the first time this evening. 
evening, fellas. Drew Laska, Ant Rowe, Dan Rattle. I've got to say, I am a little bit disappointed looking at my screen here. Given that Kieran Achara set the bar pretty high last week with the Christmas jumper and the Christmas hat, you guys not at all in the festive spirit there? No, not me at all. I'm the least Christmas jumpery person <laughs> I, I know. I, I haven't even done my Christmas shopping yet, let alone wearing a Christmas jumper. I'm a bit surprised by Drew, though. I thought Drew would come hard with, with, with some Christmas outfit. Well, I mean, I do have on green, right? That does count, huh? Ro, what's your excuse? I think there's been a lack of communication. However, me and Mike Tuck clearly synced up tonight. <laughs> we've got the color theme. We've got the style going. I think I think we qualify as Christmas attire tonight. We didn't. We didn't get that. We didn't get that. We didn't get the out, memo. Did we? No, I mean it's terrible, really. No, uh, not quite as Christmassy down here as you would like. Now, now disappointing. But I have to ask you all: if the two of us are taking on the three of you in a Christmas karaoke challenge, what's your go-to song? Well, the, I, I'm not. I, I try and avoid it, particularly with Drew, because Drew can sing a bit. I try and avoid the karaoke, but there's only one Christmas song to sing: "Fairy Tale of New York." You can be, you can be Kirsty McCall there. Yeah, I got you. There we go. So Rose, the backing singer, I think. <laughs> I'm going solo. I'm going Mariah Carey. I'm doing oh. it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get that on tape, please. Somebody film Rose singing Mariah Carey. There's one to look uh. forward to. Always the diva. Uh, Mike, I can see you with a cardigan, slippers by the fire, doing a bit of white Christmas. Uh, I don't know. Maybe last Christmas, little George Michael. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Let's get into the BBL championship table. Leicester sitting pretty at the top. Remain the only unbeaten side in the league so far after the first five games. Your Sharks looking good. Mike in second match. So they're in good shape as well. Of course, with the Giants in the cup final after that two-leg win over the Rocks earlier this week. A win tonight for Newcastle puts them back in the top four mix. London and Bristol, they've lost only once. Cheshire, Surrey and Plymouth, well, they're all struggling right now, although it's pretty fair to say there is a long way to go yet. Sadly, COVID has had a pretty big impact on the schedule this weekend, as you will see on Sunday. Bristol take a long old road trip uh, to Glasgow. Plymouth on the road in Cheshire too. That's the only other game on Sunday. We're the only live game in the BBL this evening. And the riders started strongly as we've seen from the league table this season started so strongly last year as well mike they won 14 of their first 15 on the way to the title how do they pull off fast starts uh, so consistently when other teams are hit and miss well i think it's a testament to the organization as a whole i think that you know they've got a, a good bat, a good business plan a good structure um they they know what they want they bring back always bring back a good solid core of guys you know they managed to bring back gino crandall which was huge for them this season um, and then they've got, you know, Rob Paternostro, who's just a proven coach in this league. Over the last 10 years, you know, he's, he's won it all, he's done it all. Um, and, you know, it, it shows in the record. Let's take a look at the roster in a, in a bit more detail. You mentioned, you know, Crandall, their floor general. Last year's league MVP, of course, and he is putting up great numbers once again, very much in the running for that accolade once again. Two of the new riders' additions, Kimball McKenzie, Mark Loving, they're both settling in well. Mo Walker, great to see him back. Uh, from injury this season. The league very much a better place uh, for having him in it. Newcomer Patrick Whelan, he's returned to the UK after a chunk of time in Spain. He's been an ever-present this season in the riders' backcourt, uh, providing uh, a lot of impact at both ends of the floor. Connor Washington could be uh, the best six man in the league. Zach Jackson, he's in great form as well, back after injury ended his season last time around. And we are delighted to see Darian Nelson Henry back tonight after uh, injury at the start of this campaign. Let's talk about him first of all, Mike. Why is the Riders skipper such an important part of this team? I think uh, he's just a proven big guy, and, and when you talk about consistency, this is one of those guys. Um, you know, you, you can put him out on the floor and trust him out there. Uh, he's going to be a leader. He's going to set the tone. He never gets too high. He never gets too low. You know, he, he's pretty steady along the way. And, uh, and then as a player, you know, he's one of the toughest big men in the league to guard. You know, he's extremely, extremely strong and, and, and very wiry around the basket, can finish in a lot of different ways. So he's a guy out there, like I said, Mr. Consistency. Well, let's learn a little bit more about the team that he leads, as seen through their own eyes as we get inside the Riders' locker room. If I'm not going myself, I'm gonna go with the reigning MVP, Gino Crandall. I'll probably just say Gino. To me, I value like your ability to see the court in the moment. Well, I would say Gino, he's the point guard. He knows all the plays, knows where everybody's supposed to be. You know, he has to have that great basketball mind and instinct. So he definitely has the highest basketball IQ. 
Patrick Whelan. Between Kimball and Patrick. Hey, there's a couple guys who can shoot. Give me Pat. I would go with Pat's the best shooter. Stepping in and hitting some big shots. Every time he releases it, it looks like it's going in. I mean, I'm not going to say me because it's, you know, my segment. Why not you? I mean, because I'm the one talking, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't be out here blowing my own trumpet. Kimball McKenzie. Definitely has to be Kimball. Oh, yeah, it is Kimball. It is Kimball. Never mind. Hands down. First day he got his car, accident. A word on the street is that Kimball ran into a wall as he was trying to get out of the parking lot. Kimball over here getting in wrecks with ghosts. <laughs> it's actually not me. I might have had a little slip up. I'm actually a good driver, though. I thought the car was in reverse, and the car wasn't in reverse. And, you know, the, the manual tripped me out. I feel like Zach. I want to say Zach Jackson. Just because it's funny to me, I would have to say Zach. I remember last year he said he ate a lot of chicken nuggets. Because I know he doesn't eat a lot of things. He's a picky eater. Oh, he's never tried cereal in his life. Witnessed him cook for the first time in his life. That's myself. Yeah, I'm de I definitely have the worst diet on the team. <laughs> yeah, I'll eat some gummy worms for breakfast. It don't matter to me. I'm young. I get to do that for a little bit longer. Most likely to miss the team bus, I would say maybe Connor. Probably Connor. Maybe Connor. I'll go with Connor, but for damn good reason. You'd be late if you want Connor. I'm telling you right now. He's got a lot going on. He's got to balance, you know, the family, the kids and stuff. He'd be late with a good excuse. Is this what people say to me? Enough. <laughs> I'm a free spirit, so I don't really, I'm not rushing and I don't really care about too many rules. You set a better example, you're the veteran player here, but I don't care about all that. <laughs> Gino's definitely the fun favorite. Probably Gino. The reigning MVP. One of our leaders on the team. But if not him, then uh, Connor, you know, Connor uh, been here for so many years. You know, the fans know him, they love him. I think now everyone's coming back. I think everyone's just been excited to see Gino and watch him play, so I definitely think Gino. Coach would be played by some kind of Italian-American actor. Probably Robert De Niro. Give me like, just to be funny, give me like Robert De Niro. I feel like he, he's got the, the acting chops and the intensity. Oh man, it would have to be Kimball. I gotta go with Kimball, he's getting a lot of the love here. Probably Kimball. Yeah, man, I gotta get it off the pressure, man. Yeah, you know, hey, let's go out there, play the right way. Yeah, these guys, they can't man, they stick with us. These guys can't hang with us, come on. It would definitely be De Niro playing Coach Pat on Astro, wouldn't it? I, I don't know. It could be a slimmer uh, Tony Soprano. I don't know. It's Gandolfini. I like yeah, that. Well, who knows? Any of the Sopranos, frankly. Let's talk Gino Crandall first, because if there's one player to showcase the talent in the BBL to someone who'd never seen it before, this guy would be pretty much be on everyone's shortlist, wouldn't he? Yeah, 100%. Uh, he, he's, just, he's just a tough player to guard. I mean... He's a very focused guy. Every time you see him, when he walks into the gym, he's not smiling. He's, he's, he's here to take care of business. And then when he's on the court, you know, he's a leader. He's a true leader. He's a student of the game. You can tell that he's, he's studied up on the other teams. Um, and he is so shifty, so hard to guard. He switches speeds so quickly. And he can score, but he can find the open man. He can shoot. He can pass. He does a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Uh, just to be clear, Mike, you'd be on everyone's shortlist as well. <laughs> well <laughs> I, I would hope so. That I hope so. Uh, Mark Loving, a new American import this season. Uh, he's had NBA G League experience. A wiry, long player was how Kieran Achara described him when we first saw him this season. But he's been shooting over 55% from the perimeter as well. So he seems like he can do it all too. You've squared off... Uh, against him this season how did that go yeah well <laughs> not well i mean obviously they, they've got a, a win over us but he's um i'm really impressed with this guy as a player you know he's a, he's a stretch four he, he he's not 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 very big not very strong but like i said he, he can catch the ball and shoot from from pretty much anywhere on the floor extremely tough to guard and, and he'll give you a quiet 20 without even realizing it Zach Jackson back from an injury hit season last time out, uh, but he is an integral part of this lineup. Patrick Whelan on fire at the moment, isn't he? 100%. Last two games, 22 points and 25 points, knocking down six threes in each game. And if we look back at that locker room segment right there, everybody on the team was saying he was the best shooter. So he, he's the type of guy that can get hot, and he's, he's on fire lately. Mo Walker, another player back from injury. My shooting touch is a lot better. He said earlier in the season, I'm more confident putting the ball on the floor now. That seems pretty spot on. He's shooting almost 65%. Uh, so a strong, formidable 
riders line up once again. Let's hear from the man that makes the champs tick. Drew caught up a little bit earlier with Coach Paternostro. Coach, a 5-0 and start to defending your league title. Are you happy with how the team is playing this season? Yes, I am. I think that um, it's more than just winning and losing. And, you know, we've played uh, a lot of games so far. We've only lost two. I think we're 13-2 and two overall. But it's the way they come to practice every day, the way they listen, their focus. I think from day one, we knew we had that kind of group that um, was going to be fun to coach. And so far, it's been great. And Gino seems to be back in MVP form. How important is he to the team? Yeah, Massive, uh, he's a great player, obviously. We know that. We know what he can do. He can pass. He can score. Uh, but he has that it factor as well. And we saw that last year in the big games where he made big plays late. But, you know, the thing I say about people that are MVP or great players is do they make their teammates better? And, yeah, he does. I think that um, he puts his teammates in great position to score. And I think he's been a great leader as well this year. In your second game against an unpredictable Newcastle Eagles side, what do you expect in the night? Well, I expect them to be a good team this year, first of all. I think when you look at the roster, you, you look at it and you say uh, they're, they got one of the best rosters in the league. And, you know, this league's tough. There's some highs, there's some lows. And, yeah, obviously they're coming off a loss. But we know uh, what kind of talent they have. I think they have talent up front. And I think they have talent in the backcourt. And I think they're tough to defend. And I think the important thing for us, though, is to make sure we don't give them anything easy. I think um, when you looked at that London game where they won that game and they won it pretty convincingly at the end, they got a lot of easy looks, a lot of transition baskets. So for us, I think, you know, we want to get our defense set up and make sure that they're not out in the open floor getting easy looks. And in order to come out 6-0 and tonight, what are going to be the keys to the game? Well, we got to take care of the ball. I think taking care of the basketball is always important against the Eagles. I think that's key. And I think what we have to do is make sure we control the glass. When you look at their rebounding, I think they score the highest second-chance points in the league. So I think when Shelton and uh, Peel on that glass at times, it's important giving them extra opportunities. So the rebounding, important, and also taking care of the ball. Thanks for your time, Coach. Good luck tonight. Thank you. It's Coach Paternostro, a coach you look at in the BBL. He played in the league a long time and think, I'd like to play for him. <laughs> uh, yes yes, and no. Uh, I mean, obviously, he, he's a great coach. He knows what he's doing. He seems like he's a player's coach, which everybody likes that. But he seems like he expects a lot. You know, expectations are high in Leicester, and, and I think that he's going to tell it to you straight every time. So you got to have a thick skin to play in Leicester, I think. <laughs> well, it is rolling for them at the moment. It's been rolling the last few years. Uh, for Coach McLeod at Newcastle since he's taken the top job. Keeps on winning trophies. We'll find out a little bit more about him next, and in particular, the player that he singles out as his fave. I'm going to go with Fletch just because we have a great relationship, but his heart's on the line all the time. He's kind of the leader out there, so we're very close. And we, we move things forward together, you know. It's very much we're on the same journey.
Welcome back to Leicester, where the champs host the Eagles. And it is always compelling when these two big hitters square off. It is hard to work out this Eagles team this season. Exhilarating a few weeks back against London, right here on Sky Sports. They won their next game in triple overtime against Cheshire. And then they go and muster just 55 points in a heavy loss to Bristol. So Mike Tuck, why are they so erratic? It's uh, it's consistency for me, and I, I think that there's a lack of focus from the start of the game. I think if you look at the games that they have played well and they have won from the get-go, they, they've been great. Um, but in those other games, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll build up a deficit and be fighting to get back all game. So when you see them score, you know, only 55 points, wh where's, where are they scoring the ball? Um, and they're not moving the ball around enough. They're not finding the guys in the right spot. Most of their points come from in the paint, and that's where they need to find the points. It is baffling when you look at this roster, exactly that point, how a roster this stacked can muster only 55 points. Wes Person, the American guard, I think it's fair to say, yet to find his best form. Corey Johnson, a real sharp shooter. He was with the Riders last season, of course. He's added even more scoring ability to this potent Eagles offense. Uh, Louis Say is another great contributor uh, from the bench. Another clutch shooter, Darius Defoe, provides big game experience and strength, as does Brandon Peel. He spent uh, three seasons with the Lions. Duke Shelton, another one of the U.S. imports, one of the most athletic bigs in the league, always won for the highlight reel. And last but not least, number 44, Ramon Fletcher, the two-time league MVP and very much the heart and soul of this Eagles team. Fletcher answered his critics, Mike, last time we saw him with a mesmerizing performance. He leads the league, as you'll see there, in assists per game. Do you feel like he's getting back to his best after a slow start? Yeah, I think, you know, if we look at that game versus the Lions, that's that's the Fletcher that we all know and love. Uh, he put the team on his back that game, had 17 assists. Now, if you need to do that every night, it's going to be a long season for you. So I think now's the time where the, the Newcastle Eagles need to start ironing out the wrinkles and start figuring out, and they need they need some secondary scores to start stepping up. Well, uh, step up Wesley Person, right? He came in late. Uh, replaced Matt Scott, who got injured, so it was always going to be perhaps a slower transition. Do you think it's fair what I said, that he hasn't quite settled yet? Yeah, I think he's a guy who's still finding his footing, but I had a conversation with Fletcher before before when we played them, and he told me that he thinks that person is could be or is the best player on their team. Corey Johnson up against his old team. How important is, is that familiarity that he's going to have with the court of the arena? Well, you know, especially for a guy at his position, this guy is a flat-out shooter. So when you come to a gym that you've already practiced and played in for, for over a year, uh, you're going to be comfortable in here, and hopefully he'll be able to knock down some shots tonight. Duke Shelton, the Duke of Newcastle, he's already a fan at Fave. We've seen his energy up close and personal a few times on Sky Sports this season. Brandon Peel, a lot of the less flashy stuff comes from Brandon Peel. Peel's very much the glue guy, isn't he, as Kieran referred to him a few weeks back. Yeah, he's he's a guy who does a little bit of everything. Another, another one who's come in late, so he's still kind of finding his way within this team, but he's a glue guy. He, he does all those little things that, that you don't really come up on the stat sheet and you don't notice. All right, then time to get a little bit up close and personal with the Eagles play caller, a man with great experience and very much one of the backbones of this Newcastle organization. Ian McLeod, head coach, Newcastle Eagles. I would describe my coaching style as calm. He probably doesn't call it if he doesn't fall. D went down. Um, that's an interesting one. You just throw that on someone on a random Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> uh, well, calm's definitely up there for sure, considered. Um, I think passionate about the guys, player centers. Oh, a few too many words there, but certainly player centers. I think I used to be a tactics man. I think slowly as I've transitioned into the head coach role, I've uh, become more of a player's coach. Contain down, good. Next rotation, Lewis. Come on, Lewis. Come on, Lewis. Great job. The strategic battle, for sure. Um, you against another coach, preparing our team players, uh, trying to pick out what strengths and weaknesses. I'd have to split that between two. I think the, the, the first trophy we won, the COVID trophy, as it's referred to, the BBL trophy, and I think this past BBL playoff championship, the celebrations at the final buzzer there. Newcastle Eagles have won! The Newcastle Eagles have won the playoffs! Incredible scenes here in Leicester! 
And that was a big one for us because we came through a lot of adversity. I'm going to go with Fletch just because we have a great relationship, but his heart's on the line all the time. He's kind of the leader out there, so we're very close. And we, we move things forward together, you know, it's, uh, it's very much we're on the same journey. I'd start off with the heart, and that has to come from Darius Defoe. Um, he's the heartbeat of everything we do in this club. I think for the basketball IQ and the brain would be Fletch. If I had to pick a shooter, I think I'm going to go Lewis Sayers. I think mentally he's very strong in tough situations. Rebounding, i got to go Duke. And I think uh, maybe a scorer's mentality, I'm, I might throw Kyle in there as well. That's quite a few. Um, I think the big question is who would I choose? Um, all right, I'm going to go with Kyle. I think I'm going to win the mental battle. This coach, I don't know, whoever the shortest one is. You know. <laughs> He's got a tough task in store tonight. The Leicester Riders, ruthless right now. Although, Mike, that cup game at the top, very interesting. A three-point win against the Lions, but... They were 23 points up at one point. So I suspect the coach Padanostra had some words with his team after that. Oh, 100%. You know, you cannot let your, your foot off the gas at any moment, especially in, in a two-game aggregate situation. And uh, the London Lions, you know, great fight for them to come back. It's going to be such an interesting second leg. It's been a mixed bag for Newcastle. At times they've been, well, breathlessly entertaining, as they were against London a few weeks back. But that's peppered with defeats as well, including one to your Sheffield Sharks a few weeks back. You guys love playing against Newcastle. Why do you always bring your A game against Newcastle? I don't know. It's just, it's one of those teams, you know, I know that there's a huge rivalry between the Riders uh, and the Eagles. But for me, the Sharks and the Eagles have just a bigger rivalry. So we, we always step up and I make sure the team's ready. We look at the key numbers for both teams, uh, but Newcastle fast break and second chance points. The latter something that uh, Coach Padanostro emphasised a bit earlier on. Newcastle have to hit those high numbers tonight to keep in touch, don't they? Yeah, 100%. I mean, Newcastle Eagles are a team that hit the boards hard, and uh, you know, good defense creates good offense. And for them, they're always at their best when they're they're getting rebounds, they're getting second chance points, but they're also playing out in the break. We look at individual team leaders. One of the keys to the game, you feel, Mike, is defensively, the most important thing the Eagles need to do is slow down and hold down the riders' perimeter shooting. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's what they're best at. You know, most of their points are scored from, from, from beyond the arc. Um, and, you know, it's a tough team because you've got so many different players that can knock down open threes with their spacing so that the Eagles have a tough job ahead of them tonight. They certainly do. That is an understatement and then some. But as we said, this Eagles side, we're never quite sure which one is going to turn up. We hope they bring their A game because we are almost ready to tip off here in Leicester. Riders Eagles coming next. Jackson. Oh! Johnson fires the three, Johnson hits the three.
almost set for tip here in Leicester. The Riders want to maintain their unbeaten start to the season. The Eagles want to remind us of their big hitting status. Let's head down to Ant, Drew and Dan. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, it's always a big game when the Eagles and the Riders go head to head. Let's get a look at the uh, starting lineup for tonight's game. And uh, we'll start off with the Riders. No surprise, no changes. Still Walker. Nelson Henry's fit, but he's coming off the bench still. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. Perfect record so far in league play. Look for Crandall to create for his teammates in this game. And if we have a look at the Newcastle lineup, they have chopped and changed a little bit, but they seem to have settled on this five now. Well, they're looking for confidence at number two there, Parsons. So I like to like the start there. I thought he did really well against London in this format. Well, the two teams are out, and we are ready to get the game underway here in Leicester. It will be Walker and Shelton to jump it up. And it is Newcastle who get the opening possession. Here's Peel. Peel stumbling, just keeps his balance. To the turnaround. Not sure Randall comes away with it. Relatively easy first defensive set there for the Riders. There's Walker. Spinning one way, then the other. Working his way to the basket and finishing well. Both teams going inside early, but two very different results there. Nice start and nice finish there from Bill Walker. And speaking of those results, Mike Tug mentioned it at the top. Newcastle Eagles are most successful when they get off to a great start. Not looking great so far. Corey Johnson knows these rims very well. Knocks down the first shot of the game. He does indeed, and he was really good in this exact picture at the start of the season. He had 22 points in this building. Walker again, and Shelton gives him a little grab, and the foul is called. And that's what you want, that's what that strategy is designed to do, it's to input the ball early to Mo Walker, he's either going to score or get the opposing big man in foul trouble. Foul number one, already on Shelton. And historically, the Leicester Riders always start inside, but I think they, they really like that matchup tonight with Duke Shelton against Mo Walker, as Mo Walker at least has two or three inches on him. Here's Crandall. Now to Jackson. Jackson floats one up, rattles out, Peel with the rebound. Here's Shelton trying to go to work. Crandall pokes it loose. Shelton still has it. No real room for him. Gets the pass out to Johnson. Johnson dancing his way through to the finger roll. That's such a nice move. You can see Johnson was looking for space there to get off that three-point shot, but saw a gap and exploited it. Crandall kicked out to Loving in the corner for three off the mark. Walker with the offensive rebound. His wheeling for three doesn't quite get the roll. And Newcastle Eagles bailed out there, the, the number one three-point shooting team in the league. You don't want to give them a second opportunity at it. Stepped on the line there, that'll be a less the ball. There seemed to be a lot of uh, lack of movement there on that Eagles offense. Ramon Fletcher there penetrates, but everyone was standing still. Statues, no one cutting, no one relocating, and evidently causes a turnover there for the Eagles. <laughs> Crandall moved on to Jackson. Jackson along the baseline gets all the way to the rim. Good decision, Zach Jackson. We know how dangerous he is from that three-point line. Peel quickly down court. Overcook Zach, gets his own rebound. Second attempt is good. Good activity from Brandon Peel. I think he's a player now. They need to see more from him offensively. 9.5 points per game. Not shabby by any means, but his standard's a little bit below par. Oh, it's a poor pass. Shelton running down the lane is foul. No, he's traveling violation is the call. I thought he, he, I thought he got a, a lot of leeway there. There's that half step there when he catches the basketball. Ramon Fletcher there waiting, waiting, and one, two. Oh, I don't know, it was close. Oh, yeah, it's that half step just, in, just before there, wasn't it? Yeah, I put that turnover on Ramon Fletcher. He gave that ball up just a little bit too early to Duke Sheldon. That's Jackson. Mismatch here for Walker, back out to Jackson. Oh, Leicester, we talk about how good a three-point shooting team they are. They've missed their first three. It's Fletcher from behind the arc. He's off right. Off left, even. 
Here's Crandall, and he knocks down the first triple of the game for Leicester. And that's a really dangerous sign for the Vicarasso Eagles. That was maybe his one. Gino Crandall has everything but 52.4% from the three-point line so far this year. He's looking pretty, pretty efficient from out there. But you talk about missed shots early, but the key is their open shots. Yeah. And over time, Nuka, uh, sorry, the Leicester Riders, they won't miss too many of them. Here's Whelan. Oh, nice drive to the basket and finish from Patrick Whelan. That's so nice. Such an aggressive move. That quick crossover and such a soft finish with the left hand. Had a tremendous game in London in the cup semi-final. That's an offensive foul on the screen. I think it's Shelton. It's going to be his second. And that's where that strategy falls into the favor of the Leicester Riders when you get the big man in early foul trouble. And not a bad replacement in Darius Defoe, who we've seen change games. But where they do look a little bit thinner was with Daniel Johnson-Thompson not being here today. It's a 6'9 athletic active body that you're not going to be able to utilize this evening. He's loving. Down to Walker. Defoe on his back. Goes to the hook and finishes. Wow, Mo Walker, it doesn't matter who's guarding him right now, he's having his way down there. And a lot of credit to Mo Walker, a guy that's been out for two years because of a hamstring injury, has really stepped up in a lead role this season and off to a great start this year. Here's Johnson looking to drive, throws it high off the glass. Wow, that's a great move there. One, because his defender's a good three inches bigger than him, but secondly, doesn't settle for that shot, finds a way to get all the way to the rim. But for me, I, I don't think that's sustainable over 40 minutes with Corey Johnson going one-on-one, -on -one, so they got to get some movement with the Newcastle Eagles offense. Mo Walker, perfect three of three for six points here early on. Fletcher loses the ball. Crandall is first to it. Forward to Loving. Loving. That's an offensive foul, is it? Yep. He was there a long time for the stand uh, person. It was. It was one of those slow motion ones, too. He knew he was in position. Everyone in the building knew he was in position, but I don't think Mark Lemon could stop himself. Yeah, one of the easier calls the officials will have to make tonight. Midway through the opening quarter, Leicester with a five-point lead, and the Newcastle Eagles call a timeout. And Drew, I guess the the, the thing is, if we're talking here, is Leicester going to the rim have got everything that they wanted. The three-point shots that they've missed have been wide open. So Leicester basically. They could be miles away here if they hadn't missed those shots. Yeah, and that's the issue with the Newcastle Eagles this season is that they don't really have an identi and identity. Historically, they're known as an offensive team, but they're off to a rough start offensively. So for great teams, you've got to hang your hat on something else. What is that going to be? Is it going to be defense? Is it going to be getting the 50-50 ball? Is it going to be energy? I don't think we've really seen what Newcastle Eagles can hang their hat on this year. Well, the other problem he's got is uh, getting those early two fouls. Obviously, then bringing Defoe in a few minutes earlier than he would have wanted. And obviously, that's about rotations and keeping Darius fit and healthy and not in foul trouble himself for later in the game. Well, you're going to get a lot of value by having Darius Defoe on the court. But what you are taking away is of Duke Shelton. Let's not, you know, kid ourselves. That's that's 15 points, 11 rebounds out there. You know, that's a double double walking around, getting your team second chance opportunities when you're going through periods of not being able to shoot the ball particularly well. Here's Fletcher for the Eagles. Defoe trying to get it to Johnson. It's poke loose. Crandall is first to it. Crandall will run it back and hammer it in. Newcastle Eagles cannot turn the basketball over. The East Leicester Riders team will punish them and they'll do it in a fast fashion. Defoe sent the long way around, kisses it off the glass. Year 18, Darius Defoe is having an unbelievable season. He's really very efficient. Oh, nice pass. And Walker lays it in. Wow, they're just thrown in the area of Mo Walker. And it's like he's, everything he touches is turning to gold. Four for four from the field, eight points personal. Johnson for three at the top, knocks it down. Wow, just like that, Corey Johnson. One shot, closes the gap to four. He's four or four as well for his nine points. And a guy that's known as a shooter over the last two seasons has come to the Newcastle Eagles and proven that he's much more than just that. 
Jackson can't finish. Oh, Fletcher bounced it off his foot. He's able to keep it going. Back to Peel. Peel driving hard. Runs into trouble. Walker was in the no charge zone, so it couldn't be a charge. Pull up from Crandall in transition. Rebound from Lovett. Look at the space that Whelan has for three. Any professional basketball player, especially one of Whelan's caliber, is going to make that shot all day long. And he got rhythm for the one he got earlier that he was wide open, but he just happened to miss. Poor defense by the Newcastle Eagles. Well, he was 6 or 7 from the three-point line last week, so I'm pretty sure it'd be high on the scout report. Fletcher is blocked by Walker. Interior protection there with Mo Walker, 6'10", guard in that room. Crandall for three, and he stares down the shot as Lester open up a 10-point lead. Well, it starts with the rest of the Riders' defense, and Gino Crandall just punishes him down the other end of the floor with that pull-up, Jay. Johnson looking to reply off the mark. The foe first to the rebound. Oh, he's caught him with an elbow there. And the foul is caught against Defoe, can't believe it. Well, Defoe chased that ball down, it was a really good offensive rebound. And then the swing through there, wow, there's a lot of contact, isn't there? There's a lot of contact, but he's got he's so much taller than Crandall that his arms are at that height. Yeah, exactly. I, I I don't think that's intentional by Darius Defoe. He's just being strong with the ball. That's what you teach a big. Be strong with it. Elbows up. He's just following through. And Gino Crandell happens to be four inches smaller. Just an unfortunate play. Sometimes the law of averages just happen. I've seen Darius Defoe at the other end of, of that exchange where he's smart with his body and the referees have caught it. Wait. So the big guy is arguing that it was a foul, and the, and the guard is arguing that it wasn't. I'm trying to understand. Come on, man. I'm trying to actually give some props to the big, and you just reneged. Come on, man. I'm all confused over here. We're just, we're just, we're just trying to be different people. <laughs> I really want to be a big, and you want to be a guard. That's what That's it is. It. <laughs> Nelson Henry into the game for the first time, and that came off him last, so will be a Newcastle ball. Well, what a it's good news for the Riders having Dar uh, Darren Nelson Henry back into the equation as well. He will be the most productive player you'll find in 20 minutes of basketball. Well, last uh, season, he actually led the league in efficiency per minute. He only played 20 minutes a game, so his average was like 12 and 5 or 12 and 6, something like that. So it didn't look great. But actually, when he was out there, nobody was more efficient than him. And it's a great balance that the Leicester Riders have. Mo Walker, he's going to punch it out there, play a little bit slower. Nelson Henry is great at rent, getting out in transition and getting easy buckets and moving in the half court. On to McKenzie. Now Nelson Henry. Crandall gets it back to Nelson Henry. Just a little short. Defoe wins the rebound battle. Fletcher going quick. Sent back out. Sayers now for three. Overcooks it. Wow, that was way off too. I thought Fletcher did a really good job of pushing the basketball, but the options were limited. And Sayers stepping into that three-point shot. Not a bad shot at all. Well, Crandall up in the air. Wasn't quite sure where to throw it. Ends up throwing it to a Newcastle player. Johnson. Foul called. Will that count? No, it's on the floor. Johnson, one of the few bright sparks at the moment you feel like the majority of things he are doing he's, he's doing is positive creating even for himself being on nine points but, but being aggressive yeah and speaking of Corey Johnson ever since those first five games of the season he's probably been their most consistent player nine of the 13 for somebody else to step up here maybe you can Add to his total again. No, the three is off the mark. Sayers with the rebound. Fletcher steps into a triple. Rims out. Defoe, third chance opportunity for the Eagles. Wow, and Riders not the best rebounding team this year. Javril Adekoya um, averages 6.4, and he's their leading rebounder, and Eagles taking full advantage on that there, get, crashing the basketball. Washington gets it to Nelson Henry. He's been a little... Oh, it's tipped away by Defoe and left to get it back. Adekoya in the corner for three. Not quite. Nelson Henry trying to time the rebound. Does so. Gets it back to Adekoya. He's blocked. Second attempt he's able to score. The Leicester Riders in that possession just wanted it a little bit more. Great effort. 
Fletcher. Gets it back from Saints. Now looking to attack the foe. It's back iron for him. Rebound McKenzie. Up. Oh, that's a nice spin from Nelson Henry in this time he lays it in. Really was. Nelson Henry, good body positioning there. He knew he had the full way he wanted him to, and it was a simple spin baseline and finish. Williams. Off the mark. Rebound McKenzie, and that will do it for the first quarter. Well, the one thing we've known about the Leicester Riders this season is they know how to put the ball in the basket. Even when they missed a few shots early on, they kept that scoreboard ticking all the way through. And they have scored 27 in the first period. And they lead their arch rivals by 12 into one here in Leicester. We will have the second quarter after this break. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena in Leicester, where the Riders have made a good start, leading the Newcastle Eagles by 12. Jackson. McKenzie out to Washington in the corner. Washington gets in close, but leaves it short. Johnson looking to attack, out to Sayers. Peel, Peel with the step back, not enough on him. And that's a matchup you'd think Brandon Peel could comfortably score on. He's got to figure out a way here now to help his team out who are stuck on 15 points so far. Washington for three knocks it down. Well, Connor Washington, a guy we've seen so many times be introduced into a basketball game and provide instant offense for this Riders team. And especially in this rivalry, you know Connor Washington is always going to be ready to go, ready to step up when his number's called. And we're talking about Leicester missing early on, they're now 50% from the three-point line, four of eight. Here's Peel off the mall. Eagles are just out of sync. Everything looks so disjointed. And it's Jackson with the flush. That's the thing. If you're not scoring that one, then you've got to get stopped on the other end. And 
at the moment, this is the worst combination for the Eagles because they're not doing either. But it's recognizing matchups as well. Brandon Pill has McKenzie on him instead of settling for the turnaround jump where he has to punish him by putting his chest in his chest and getting some easy at the rim. Johnson to the five. It's a foul on Washington. Two coming. Two bodies coming together there. Two very quick, strong cards in Washington and Fletcher. Deemed too much contact there, and Eagles will get another crack at their offense at 14 on the clock. Here's Johnson. Under pressure, converts. He's into double figures now with 11 of his team, 17. He's the only one that looks like he's got any sort of rhythm or confidence on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, he's come to play tonight. Connor Washington gets a friendly bounce. Well, when you've played here for as long as he has, Dan, those, those friendly bounces come more often than not. Riders doubling up the Eagles here through 12 minutes, 34-17. Fletcher, Peel, out to Sayers for three, Strickland. Oh, good decision there, Brandon Peel didn't force up a shot himself, and Sayers, that catch and shoot, nothing but net. Exactly, Brandon Peel, a lot more patient on that possession right there, finding Lee Sayers on the right wing. Washington, rattles out, Fletcher, comes away, Newcastle have numbers here, Johnson, in towards Peel, good pass. Really good pass there, and that's sometimes all it takes is that one basket to go in. Peel now on four points, and you really want his confidence to start increasing as this game grows older. Last five points have been scored by the Eagles. Here's Adekoya, trying to do something about it, and gets all the way to the rim again. Jabril Adekoya, one of those guys, Mr. Utility, can do a little bit of everything. Nice left-hand finish there. Day is room for three. Dangerous thing to do. Leave him open. Great shot. Washington. Ripped away by uh, Fletcher. It will actually be a hell ball. So it'll be a Newcastle possession on the arrow. Really good defensive play there, and Leicester one is going to be a bit careful here. I feel like that Darian Nelson Henry has been that big target for them inside. Darius Defoe already has one foul. You want to try and see what's going to happen there with that matchup. They, you know that Coach Matt can't quite bring in Shelton because can you trust a, a big guy down there with so much minutes to play before half time? So I feel like Leicester one has missed an opportunity there to to exploit that matchup. Well, this is the interesting time with the Eagles now. Fletcher off the court. They've cut it back to 11. His say is trying to get it to single figures off the mark. And in order for the Newcastle Eagles to be successful this year, they have to prove that they can produce with Ramon Fletcher to get his blow on the bench, which they haven't so far this season. Randall fires up the three and knocks it down. That's such a tough move. Gino Crandall sizing up the defender and lets it go. Crandall three or four from long range now, 11 points. Here he is again. He's going to take a deep one. Gino Crandall really feeling it here. Four or five from behind the arc. That's your MVP doing MVP things, just changing the game in a matter of moments. Incredible sequence of events there from Gino Crandall. Well, look how far you can barely see the three-point line from where he's shooting it, but that is a result, Drew, of the previous one going in. He's just feeling comfortable. Exactly, and this is a guy that is not hesitating from the three-point line. That's clearly added this to his game. I noticed it early in the season. He was taking more threes. His percentages didn't say he was shooting it great, but over the last couple of games, he's really starting to find his rhythm from outside. And if he's making threes, forget about it. Well, there we have in the background there a man very famous in these parts, of course. Wes Morgan, the uh, captain of Leicester City's 
Premier League winning team in 2016. He's also on the FA Cup winning team before he retired, of course. A man who knows his way around some uh, silverware. And I'm sure he's been enjoying what the basketball team are doing here today. Is that the team where the odds were 5,000 5, to 1? Yes. Incredible. You surely you put a quid on there, Dan. I didn't, actually. I kind of regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I know people who did, and they went on very expensive holidays as a result of it. I bet they it. did. 42-25. Leicester Lee. Oh, Johnson just loses the handle. Well, and that's the pressure. As you said, Drew, when you take Ramon Fletcher out of the equation, there is no other natural ball handlers there. Good semi-pressure there from the Leicester Risers. He calls a turnover on the Eagles. Jackson given the baseline, and that was a mistake. Way too easy there. It's one dribble all the way to the rim. No interior resistance there. Being challenged at the rim. Far too easy. Here's Johnson. Back to Person. Oh, almost stolen away. Person gets it back. Fires up the three. Off the mark and lets to get the ball. Crandall's going to take another three. Oh! Single-handedly putting this Eagles team out of the game, but again it stems from a desperation shot down the other end of the floor. And look how difficult it is for the Eagles to get in any type of organized set on the offensive end. Well, you mentioned that the struggles of getting the ball past half court. Look who's coming in the game right now. Coach Mack has seen enough, and 4-4 Ramon Fletcher enters back into the game. But you see the way that this Leicester Riders defense react. As soon as Ramon Fletcher leaves, it's like a, a dog with a bone there. They're just, they're, they're, the intensity, the, the excitement, they know they've got the advantage. Yeah, well, they obviously watch the tape, and we, they see it just like we see it, that they lack a secondary ball handler. So I'm sure Coach Rob is talking talked about that during the week. When Fletcher's on the bench, we have to hound these guys, and it's paying off so far for the Leicester Riders. Fletcher kicked out to Person for three, knocks it down. Boy, did they need that, and Person stepped into that one, shot it confidently, and I think he needs to do more of that. Randall scoops it back, round it comes, look at the room for Jackson, and ooh, that's halfway down, offensive rebound by Whelan. Crandall from miles out. Oh, he's off the mark this time. Oh, it's almost tipped in by Williams. And Robin's able to save it for Leicester. Two Leicester players get in each other's way. Crandall takes it to the rack this time and it's foul. Wow. And you see that two Riders players fighting for the same ball. Not really an Eagles player in sight. And then Gino Crandall, a few tricks in the middle and gets a defender to commit the foul. Well, Eagles have only committed five fouls in the game, but they're not very well distributed because that's Sayers' second foul. We've got two guys on two fouls here. But it's the fight for the Leicester Riders that's really standing out to me as they sit, as they are currently up by 19 points. And you wouldn't think this is a team that won the league last year because they look as hungry as ever tonight here. Well, Gino Crandall. He's having himself a ball game, I think it's fair to say. And the area statistically you'd feel is the advantage to Eagles is, is rebounding, and they're currently losing that battle 19 to 12. Crandall has 18 points, Luke outside 28. Here's Fletcher. Here's uh, Fletcher for three, not it now. That looked like a good offense. Yes. Ball was moving, yes. spaced the floor. Fletcher finishes with a three. Oh, good hands That's from Peel to steal that away. Fletcher going quick, and nobody will catch him. 
Wow, what an individual. Excellent play there from Brandon Peel. Very few players in the league have I seen do that to Gino Crandall. Uh, you've got to try and keep your eyes on the ball, and he certainly did. And well, a couple of scores from the Eagles. It's down to 15. Rob Paternostro calls a timeout. It's a little bit of momentum if they can play that through over the next three minutes. Yeah, and I seem, it seems like we talk about this every week, like closing out quarters, and these last three minutes are crucial for the Newcastle Eagles. And that play there by Brandon Pill is what we need to see more out of the Newcastle Eagles because they have so many great shooters. Your help side defense has to be a little bit more connected. So with a team like Leicester Riders, your individual defense has to be better if you're going to get stops against this team. Well, the, uh, there's Wes again. You can actually see him now instead of the foam finger in his face. But uh, this, this Leicester team, known for its offense, maybe Wes a bit more known for, for his defense, but the, the way Leicester uh, score, we talk about it every week, their points per possession, you've got to slow it down. They've got 48 points on the board with three minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, it's easily said than done, you know, as a team that's currently third in the league in scoring and second in defense, so they can play any type of style of basketball that you choose. They can put points on the board or they can slug it out and play ugly. A great asset to have. Well, I, I would, if I'm being overcritical, I would say, you know, even to the extent where you don't have to slug it out, but you need to know, have, have your defensive assignments nailed down, right? How many times have we seen wide open three-point shots where players are having amounts of time to shoot the ball? Tipped up in the air by Walker, but it's Peel who is able to come away with it. Defoe has a size mismatch here. The double comes to force the ball out. Fletcher's going to try his luck from three-point range and knock it down. Oh, just like that. Strong, hard screen there from Darius Defoe, and all it took was a little bit of daylight for Fletcher to get that three-point shot off. And that's one player you don't want to wake up, Mr. 44, Ramon Fletcher. Last year, torching these guys for 60-plus points in the semifinals, playoff semifinals, that is. Crandall leads to five. Misses the three, though. Offensive rebound again for Leicester. Eighth of the game. Crandall to the elbow. He's up to 20. It's really difficult stopping this left and right team anyway. When you're giving up eight offensive rebounds, Dan, that's a, <laughs> that's a borderline mission impossible. Percy, he's going to take the three. Off the mark. Poke loose by Fletcher, but only to a Leicester hand. Crandall lobs it up to Walker and he scores. Smart play there. Gino Crandall knew if he just threw the ball high enough in that vicinity, then Mel Walker would do the rest, just like he's been doing all game. That's 10 points pressure for him. And there's another one where it just bounces out on the sideline there. Williams lost the handle. Well, as you can see, Ramon Fletcher was all the way down the other side of the floor. Last minute in the first quarter. Wheeling to Walker, travelled with it. It's one of those where he took the steps to go up for the shot and then put the dribble down. You have to dribble first if you're going to take the steps. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you had possession of the ball yet. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you might be right there. Fletcher around the screen. High off the glass, rebound by Jackson. Jackson, you're a step in all the way to the basket break right finish. He's so good at that, isn't he? That's an area of his game we've really came to enjoy watching this year because it's that aggressive, athletic move to the rim with that soft, finesse finish. Fletcher using the screen. It's an illegal screen. No, it's not. It's on... Uh, 
It's on Crandall. Defoe's got a few words to say. And what did I say? That is the other side of it from the interaction we saw in that first quarter where Darius Defoe has been seen to elbow Gino Crandall. And this time, Darius Defoe was able to sell the screen here and get his revenge, if that's a, an appropriate word. And Gino Crandall hit with a foul. Well, the referee is going to bring them together. This is like the teacher at school, isn't it? <laughs> Shake hands, say it's all going. Because actually Crandall was being subbed out of the game and he's pulled him back so that he can have that conversation with the pair of them. It was Crandall's second foul, by the way. Smart play, smart play from the veteran, Darius Defoe. Well, there's still a lot of chuntering going on out there. Here's Johnson. Johnson to the turnaround. Strings it. That's and that, that will end the first half. And the Leicester Riders with 54 points on the board have themselves a 16 point lead and really they've at the offensive end got whatever they want they ended up 7 of 15 from 3 they missed the first 3 or 4 of them it could have been more it could have been more they i mean the way they've shot the ball and inside has well been very efficient too i always think when a team scores 54 points in one half it's a combination of a brilliant offense and really poor defense and that's what's happened i think the spacing has been really good for the riders the ball movement's been excellent uh, but newcastle eagles they've just been all over the place players getting wide open three-point shots and what's more disappointing for this eagles defense is the offensive rebounds the riders have really been able to get after the ball any rare miss that they've had they've been able to have another chance at the opportunity. Well, the Eagles 10 of 20 from two-point range, but Corey Johnson is five of six, so the rest of the team are five for 14, which kind of tells you something, and those 10 turnovers have been run back for uh, 13 points by the Leicester Riders in terms of uh, points off the uh, uh, off the steals that they've uh, managed to get away, and those are not good numbers for the Newcastle Eagles. Well, let's get some uh, halftime reaction. Drew is courtside with Darian Nelson-Henry. Darian, you missed 61 days of action with a foot injury. How good does it feel to be back out there? Man, you have no idea. You know, it's just one of those things you got to watch day in and day out. You have to keep putting the work in and the weight room and all that stuff, but there's no feeling like being out there with your guys and to be able to finally be back out there doing that is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And 5-0 and in the league, what do you add to this group that seem to have no flaws? Yeah, you know, um, as captain, I just try and like lead by example, you know, just come up to show, show up to work every day and, um, you know, just try and encourage them from the bench. Maybe I'm on a minutes restriction. Maybe I'm not playing as much as I can, but I'm going to try and be a role model and I'm just going to try and like be that good energy behind the team, the fuel that lights the fire, you know. And 20 points for General Gino. Talk yeah. about his hot start in the first half. Yeah, it's just Gino doing Gino things, you know. Um, what, what more can I say? Um, he's shooting really well right now. You know, he's operating. He's running the running the show for us, which he always does. And um, it's just great to see. Just great to see him shooting with confidence. And you know, he's out there doing his thing. What, what else can I say? You know, the MVP doing MVP things. And finally, you went to Penn. Your former teammate Corey Johnson went to Harvard, two Ivy League schools. Yep. The burning question for the fans: Who's the smartest? Who's the smartest? Uh, you know, different majors, different majors. I mean, Harvard's Harvard, business business school at Penn is maybe better, but I didn't go to business school, so I'll give it to Corey. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Great first half. Yeah, you. thank you, guys. Cheers. Diplomatically handled there, and an impressive first half from the champs. A 16-point lead they take into the locker room at halftime. We'll work out how and if Newcastle can get back into it next
superb performance from the Leicester Riders. Taking a 16 point lead at the half and at both ends of the court, a dominant performance led by the reigning MVP Gino Crandall, but a lot of the riders were getting in on the act. Many Eagles had an answer for that. And it is a long road ahead for Newcastle. Clinical shooting, as we'll see here from the Leicester Riders. Those 54 points underpinned by a ruthlessness with their shooting. Total rebounds might tuck an interesting number. 22-13, including eight offensive rebounds for the Riders. Yeah, and those eight, eight rebounds are, are backbreaking for the Newcastle Eagles. It just, you know, kills your confidence every time. Another opportunity to get a second chance point. So I think it's fair to say, Mike, a number of riders in sharp form, uh, MVP Gino Crandall in particular. But is it fair to say that defensively, the Eagles have made their lives particularly easy tonight? Yeah, I, th I think that's a valid point. I think we, that's something we talked about before the game is that the Eagles had to step up and show up from the beginning of the game, and they haven't really done that. Too many times down on, on, the, on the defensive end for them, guys are getting open looks at the basket, guys are getting open lanes, uh, you know, offensive rebounds, tip-ins. And these are all little things you have to clue in to win a game against the Leicester Riders. Gino Crandall leading by example. What a brilliant first half. He had 20 points, shooting 70% and dropping threes like they're going out of style, Mike Tuck. Yeah, and that's, that's a facet of his game that was probably his weakest, if we can even say his game has a weakness. But um, he's definitely clued in on that and, and worked on that over the summer. But here's a guy who does it all. You know, he, he can finish off the break. He can pull up and shoot threes like this in transition. His confidence right now is at an all-time, all-time high. And, you know, when you get that type of confidence, these shots just going easier. The basket starts getting bigger and bigger. And look at they're happy to give him the ball. That extremely difficult shot to make right there. Is it a sense he's almost unstoppable when he's in form like this? Yeah, I mean, 20 points and a half. Come on, he's on, he's on route to get 40 for the game, you know, if he keeps going. It's a great point you make about him working on that because we talked about this earlier in the season that uh, on, a, on the back of an MVP season, he's getting, is there any way he can improve and get stronger? It seems to be that is what he's added to his game. He's not the only one getting involved in the points though. Mo Walk had a really fast start. Uh, he told us, or we talked about him talking at the start of the season about uh, the work he's been doing on his shooting. Eight early points, 100% at one stage. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I think he's actually on 10 and five for five and they went to him for the first play of the game and he's just efficient. You know, he, he's a big body. You know, he'll take his time in the post. He can back you down, but then plays like this, you know, a little bit of confidence. He can shoot the ball when he's open, knock it down, 15 footer, you know, doing a little bit of everything. Duke Shelton getting to foul trouble early on really affected their game plan for Maruka. Yeah, Duke picked up two fouls within the first four minutes of the game. And like we said, he's the energy guy that they need. And, the, and as soon as he subbed off the floor, we noticed them take a little dip, you know, and then the riders took advantage of that. So Duke has got to, you know, I know he wants to play it with energy and play intense, but he's got to be mindful of the fouls. Bright spot for the Newcastle Eagles. Corey Johnson leading the way, 11 points. And he's got to have a big second half if they're going to get back into it. Shout out Corey Johnson, my fellow Canadian. Yeah, he's the guy we talked about before the game. This is, He was a Leicester Rider last year. He, he practiced on this court for the whole year. He's played on this court. He's comfortable here. He's the, he's the one shining light for the Newcastle Eagles right now. So he's got to keep going. But then, you know, we need some other guys to start stepping up as well. Okay, uh, no Kieran Achara with us uh, this week. Hope you feel better, big man. Uh, so, you have got a very important responsibility on your shoulders, Mike Tuck. You've got to pick the Kieran Achara disgusting play of the week from our plays of the week. Steel driving hard, what a block that is. And a chance for Johnson to run. Johnson going hard, drops it in and one. A block at one end from Harris and a fast break from Johnson. What a finish. Well, he's got to be aggressive because Nelson Henry's got fouled. Got him on Nelson Henry. Nelson Henry's and got it goes. He's headed to the line. Yeah, that's a great move by his enemy. way to become aggressive. Wow, dunk from Del Pesh, and with 105 on the clock. Ooh, Nelson Henry, hustle. and it stays hustle. in bounds. Crandall, oh, oh with the move. move. Oh, oh, 
my goodness. Jump. Oh, oh, loving. My goodness. Renzo Caccini steps inside. That's great pass. It Kelly. Oh, oh, it's a huge what man. A man. Yeah. Go, there you go. What a great play. Armstrong up there, and Anderson with the flush. High flying to make Anderson the dunk finish. All right, Mikey, you ready to channel your inner Achara? I, th- I think so, <laughs> my inner Scotsman. Let's hear it. Well, I, you know, I got to go with my boy Marcus Del Pesce. The alley-oop to seal the win down there. A little, hey, how are you? That play was disgusting. <laughs> Beautifully dropped the accent as well. Fine work. Now, you might have seen a bit earlier on Leicester City legend Wes Morgan in the house. He's courtside now with Drew. Wes Morgan, welcome to Morningside Arena. Known as a defender yourself, talk about the Leicester Riders defense in the first half. Really good, I thought. You know, um, tough, in the, um, tough in the attacks, um, absorbed it well. Uh, the big guy at the back, you know, stopped a lot of attacks and um, obviously on the offensive side, worked really well um, on the quiet head. And talk about your basketball skills. How could the Leicester Riders use you? What could you offer out there? You're a shooter, known as a <laughs> slasher. What you got in your game? Nah, definitely not a shooter. You know, um, I'm a big body. If it gets a bit handsy, I'll be there to, to, to lend my, myself and try and work, help out the team and that. But, um, yeah, defense is obviously my, my full set, and that's what I'll be good at. So you can come out there and offer a couple hard fouls on the guys out there. Oh, there you go. At the end of that um, second quarter there, it got a bit spicy, so yeah. that's why I wanted to jump in. But, um, yeah, I have to stay back. 2016, you guys shocked the world, obviously, winning the league with your Leicester City. How com- how confident were you going into the season that that could actually become a reality? Well, you know, um, going into it you know obviously the previous season uh, we just avoided relegation so we just wanted to stay up but yeah it was a completely different story and that, uh, that season was really special and we, uh, we've done something that you know probably is going to be very hard to repeat again and um, you know all, the whole of Leicester appreciates it and we've done a fantastic job yeah thanks for your time Wes thank you thank you one of the great surprises, the great upsets, really, in sporting history. And speaking of surprises and upsets, if Newcastle are going to get back into this game, how are they going to do it? Mike? Well, it's two things for me. First is defense. we got to lock in on defense. we got to box guys out. No more second chances for them. And the second thing is we got to get our, our, our former MVP activated here. we got to get Fletcher going. I know he's been trying to get other guys on the team going, but, you know, he's a great scorer himself, so he's got to start taking some shots. All right. The offense needs to step up. And defensively, the Eagles need to find an answer. But this guy, Gino Crandall, in sensational form once again. Second half, coming up next.
champs in control on their home court. Let's see if the Eagles have an answer for them in the second half, which is about to get underway. So let's get back to Ant, Drew and Dan. Thanks, Nat. Yes, and it's Leicester who will start with the ball at the beginning of the third quarter. And you get the sense these are an important few minutes for Newcastle. They can't let Leicester get away from them here. They've got to play well in the first few minutes. No, and I think it starts at this end for them. A couple plays with resistance make it difficult for the Leicester Warriors to score the ball. Well, they made uh, it difficult for Loving there. Flushed him off the three. Shelton challenged the shot as well. Early shot from Peel. It was an early shot down, and you want the Leic uh, the Newcastle Eagles offense to start moving the basketball, making this Leicester Warriors defense having to work a little harder. And that's what it is for me. And both uh, on, on obviously getting stops on defense, but on the offensive side, they got to get the ball movement. Currently, only at seven assists, which is unlike the Eagles. Deflected away from Crandall, so it'll be a Leicester ball on the baseline. Five seconds on the shot clock. Wheeling, loving, fires up for three. Back iron. It was a good challenge in the end from Shelton. And that's someone who hasn't got going, you know, for the as good as the Leicester Riders' offense has been. It's 18 points per game. Guy there leading the score in Mark Lovin on zero points so far this evening. He has got five assists and four rebounds, but as you say, he's not really had too many looks at the basket. Just three shot attempts. He's missed them all. But the encouraging thing for Newcastle fans is that in the beginning of the second half, two hard closeouts on shooters. Johnson knocks the shot down, cuts the lead to 14. Back to love it. Wheeler driving in, trying to feed the pass into Walker, and it's out of bounds for a Newcastle possession. Come on, this is it. This is the uh, encouraging, positive start that the Eagles would have wanted. A, another stop there. And I love Duke Shelton being there on the help side, which was lacking in the first half again. That help side defense. Now they're getting those rotations. Let's see if they can build on it on this side of the ball. Fletcher out to Johnson. To Shelton at the free throw line. Runs into Mo Walker. And that will be a jump ball. So Newcastle will get possession. Wow, that was a do not enter brick wall in the way there. And Shelton's no small person. But again, there's that interior resistance that the Riders have and the Newcastle Eagles lacked in the first half. Doesn't reset the shot clock, so they've only got 2.7 to get a shot away. Johnson loses the bounce. Person fires up on the buzzer. Thrown out quickly towards Whelan. And chased back by Person. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. It's a Leicester ball. Wow, what a great effort, though, from Wesley Person. OK, doesn't come up with the basketball, but those are the intentions that his team must take here now to get back into this ball game and that's what I was talking about at the top what can you hang your hat on because you can't always rely on offense you're not gonna always make your shots you got to get those hustle plays 50 50 balls great effort there by West Persons nice pass Walker going to the basket is fouled by Jones that's an incredible pass and the view we had for that one Dan was superb because he throws the basketball in between Peel there and in the path of Walker and goodness me on the money Well, he wasn't convinced that he committed a foul there Johnson. I think it's fair to say But he saved his team at least one point and He saved them too because Mo Walker misses both foul shots That was the first two misses from Walker in the game. He was five of five from the floor in the first half. Locked up to Shelton, who just gets it in. Wow, that's a great pass and an even better leap from Shelton there to go above everyone else and finish that play. Here's Wheeler. 
to the spin. Off the back of the iron, Walker will chase down the offensive rebound. Peel's gone, so Newcastle only have four players here. He's loving for three, and we said he hasn't made a shot yet. He has now. And that just kills you, doesn't it, with the Brandon Peel there was out for the races, was trying to get a quick basket the other end, but what that meant was they had a disadvantage, one man on the other end of the floor, and Mark Robin opens his account. Shelton with a very flat mid-range jump shot. Lovin steps into another three. Back-to-back -back triples from Mark Lovin. And that's just a heartbreaker right there. Newcastle Eagles getting off to a great start in the second half. Creeping back in his game. And all of a sudden, Mark Lovin wakes up with a 6-0 run himself. Knocked away by Walker. Here's Lovin again. Still going. Kicks it out to Crandall. Goes back and attacks, but Shelton can't quite grab the rebound. It's a Leicester ball. Do you see the difference, though, in these two teams? The, 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 the frailty of, of Newcastle Eagles and, and the strength of Leicester Riders. For two, two and a half minutes, Newcastle Eagles were the better team. For that period of time, Leicester Riders go for a difficult period. Now, what is the difficult period here that they're going through now? 30, 40 seconds, and Riders have been able to just turn this game on its head. Jacks are going after the offensive rebound, trying to force it back in. Curtis Ted Walker's there, and eventually it's in. It's ability for teams to just ride that, per, you know, that, that, that difficult period of time and show resilience. Well, as you say, Newcastle have been the better team for three minutes of these four minutes that are here and yet Leicester are outscoring them 8-6 now after that basket and that's been the issue for the Eagles this season is just when a little bit of adversity hits it quickly turns into an 8-10 run on the other 10 for the other team and they have to do a better job of what I like to call bend but don't break every team is going to go on a run you just have to ride that wave as you said and, and find a way to get stops Poked away by Person, so it'll be a Leicester ball. Loving for a third three. Walker trying to tip it in, it just bounced off the ring as he got his hands to it. Peel steps back for three, misses. Is Loving in transition, Loving going hard, he's fouled! And that will count. Mark Lovin, someone has just turned it on switch. And what is really impressive with Mark Lovin as well is their mental maturity and strength there. You're a guy that averages 18 points a game. You haven't shot the ball very much. You're on zero points at halftime. You haven't stopped. You haven't dipped your head. You stay true to the, to the goal here. And that's to win the basketball game. And here he is, blitzing this quarter, eight points personal. And for me, I didn't like that shot by Brandon Pill, and, and he talked about it when he first signed for Newcastle, and he's added that shooting to his game. And sometimes when you work on your game in the offseason, you're really bent on proving that you worked on something as opposed to staying true to yourself with just slashing, hitting that mid-range jumper like he did for the London Lions. Personal along the baseline, no way through, late whistle. I think it's going to be on Nelson Henry rather than Loving. It is 50 that's shown to the table. The Leicester Riders are challenging that shot. You've got two players there. Looks like a fantastic block to me. I don't know. But Mark Lovin comes across there. That's what you'd want. You want your big man to protect the rim and then your athletic 4-3 there to come over and block the shot. Of course a big man would say look like a clean. <laughs> Did you not see the slap on the wrist? Come on, man. <laughs> What happened to all that love and harmony in the first half? There, yeah, we're you? back to we're back to normal. Back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Person up to seven. Newcastle with a bit of full court pressure here. Unless they need to get it over the halfway line. Knocked away, but Leicester still have it. Shot clock getting low here. Loving having to try and create here. Gets his shot away in time and knocks it down. Mark Loving has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. 
incredible individual play there. Shot clock winding down. No option, but he hits the three. Well, he hadn't scored at half time. He's now Leicester's second leading scorer. Here's Sayers in the corner. His three is short. Crandall. Jackson in the low post. Poked away by Fletcher to Leicester Ball. Just knocked that away. Timeout has been called by the Newcastle Eagles with just over four minutes to play here. In the third quarter, they trailed the Leicester Riders 68 to 46. Still haven't really slowed Leicester down. I mean, they're they're a little lower in this quarter, just 14 points Leicester in six minutes. But when you're already far behind at half time, here's a, here's another look. Look, this is incredible. The shot clock and the pressure of Sayers steps underneath him, and he just beats the buzzer to get that one away. It's an incredible play there, and and just his composure. That's what I really like about. Mark Lovin, hearing him on the, the BBL show this week, you know, he's got that cool, calm, collected character and approach to life in general. But it's, it translates to the basketball court, you know, <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. As cool as they come. And speaking of the BBL show, I was really open this week about the Newcastle Eagles. Right now, they need a spark, and I said it on the show. Who is it going to be? I'm looking down their roster. It has to be somebody other than De uh, Darius Defoe and Ramon Fletcher, a guy that's just going to take the scruff by the neck and say, hey, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity. I actually want to be the guy, and I just haven't seen that. Well, Johnson early on, but nobody else. Whelan goes behind the back. Everything but the finish for Patrick Whelan. Nelson Henry crowded out of it. Wants a foul. Doesn't get one. Here's Fletcher. He's blocked by Loving. Bobbling about. Leicester have it. Now Whelan. He goes hard. He finishes. And the foul is called. Wow. Whelan has been so good. Period. But he's really effective in the open floor as well. He's got that. Fearless mentality when he attacks him, much like his brother in that sense. That's a player high on confidence right now, and he's certainly showing his worth for the Leicester Riders. And I love what Patrick Whelan brings to this team. He started off the game pressure, Ramon Fletcher, 94 feet. Just flies under the radar so far this season and had his breakout the last two games, but just Mr. Consistent. Every game, you know he's just going to be that steady rock for the Leicester Riders. Well, he uh, can't make the free throw, but that's the lead by 24. <laughs> Offensive foul called on Darius Defoe. I didn't quite see what happened, but he ended up on the floor. I don't know if either of you saw it. I just saw Darius Defoe flying across the court. It's his third. Well, I'm still not quite sure. Well, he's, a, he's moving there when he's screening. Yeah, and, then, and then I think maybe he knew that the screen was moving, so he he, he kind of tried to put a little flop in there to hopefully change the decision of the referee. I think he just tripped over Zach Jackson's foot as he was trying to move out the way off of that screen. But I think, I think Darius felt more intelligent than that. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a, there's always an ulterior motive for that guy. There's a reason why he's so good on the defense is because he's, he's he's big, he's strong, but he, he understands how things work. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> I've, I've, I've been on the other end of it, Dan. I know. I, I've experienced it. I'm not getting involved. Here's, here's Nelson Henry with the spin and the hook. That was too easy. Darian Nelson Henry, someone we've seen this do time and time again. Shelton Travel. And you can't help but feel this is the Eagles team now when things aren't going their way. It's like the weight of the world is on their shoulders and they just cannot 
for, what, for whatever reason, they just cannot collectively come together there and just ride the wave out and figure out a way to change their fortunes around. Oh, nice pass. Good cut. A great pass from the center. And that's what you get from Darian Nelson Henry as well, the playmaking ability. I don't think we talk about it enough. There's good vision there. Setters in the corner for three. And he's the guy, besides Corey Johnson, nine points personal from Sayers. Corey Johnson on 15, but there's no one else in double digits. Fletcher's pass a little too low. I think he was trying to lead Johnson, and Johnson was trying to stop for the pull up. He's loving in the corner again. Poked up in the air. Another offensive rebound for Leicester. Their 14th of the game. Here's Jackson driving hard. And again, Nelson Henry. Finally, Newcastle get their hands on the ball. Fortunate too. Three opportunities there for this Leicester Riders offense. Oh, nice from Fletcher, right down the middle. <laughs> really nice. He just went route one there and no fear right over the top of the defenders. Shot clock. Whelan gets all the way to the basket, lays in on the shot clock buzzer. That's an incredible play. A lot of contact there with that. Took it all the way to the cup. Nice finish. Fletcher, long two. Wilson Henry with the rebound. Loving's going to take another three. Uh, on rims out. He's killing his three point percentage here in the third quarter. Having started it so well. Well, it's not. Well, it's a shot you've got to make because there's nobody there for a rebound. Yeah, exactly. And I know there's a lot of Newcastle Eagles fans at home frustrated with how the team are performing so far this season. Just something we haven't seen. You know, it's, it's a Carano attacking with speed down the line. Just a change of pace, an injection of speed there. Gets him all the way to the rim. Johnson. Dumps it off to Peel, blocked by Nelson Henry. Peel this time steps back and drops it in. Still a few seconds here if Leicester can go quick. It's forward to Whelan. Whelan does go quick. Whelan is fouled by Johnson going to the basket. Wow. Where? Oh, challenge there, yeah. I think uh, one of those ones where maybe Johnson was equal to it. And Oh, beautiful block from Corey Johnson. I think he gets him on the body, though there on the leg he gets the ball clean but i think it's the leg not enough for me good block from corey johnson but you know what what's more important two great athletes going at it there wheeler has been someone who is really good in that open floor and maybe he deserves that call just because he's been so efficient attacking the rim and he hasn't got calls previously i was just gonna say that we call that putting the onus on the ref and usually the more aggressive teams will always get those type of calls well leicester scored 27 in the first they scored 27 in the second they slowed down a bit in the third only 26 they're dominating this game here at the morningside arena it is 80 points to 53 we'll have the fourth quarter when we return
Welcome back to Leicester, where the Riders are leading by a big margin against their old rivals. It's a 27-point lead going into the fourth, and they will get the first possession of the last period. Here's McKenzie gets his man in the air. That is a clumsy foul. Travel. Oh, traveling violation. I missed that. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think you missed it, Dan, because... Oh, oh, no, there, yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. there, there, there. Oh, yeah, Great you got call. it, did. Great call, Mr. Ram. Yeah, we needed the second replay for that one, but that is a good call. Referee didn't need a replay at all. No, for the first true. time. <laughs> That's why he's out there and we're out here. Here's <laughs> Sayers. Trying to back down and he runs out of time. Tough night for the Eagles and a 27 deficit. Maybe they get back in the game, maybe they don't. And a casual fan might be asking, well, what are you looking for? I'm looking for pride. Individually and collectively, which one of these guys can you further build with? His loving. Adekoya with the head fake. Thrown away. Peel spinning. Good footwork from Brandon Peel, but not the finish. Can he get his own rebound? It's on the floor. Peel fighting for it. Hell ball, Newcastle possession. Good hustle from Peel. Really good work rate from him. And a part of you feels bad for him because he's, he's not quite getting rewarded for his effort. Something's quite not clicking for him yet. And I think there's a point in time now. He's you know, six or seven games in now with his Eagles team. They're going to need a little bit more. They're going to need a lot more from him just because of his caliber and what he's done in this league previously. Johnson running around the screen to the floater. Back on, loving with the rebound. Adekoya spinning one way, then the other, and finishing strong. It's a really nice move there. He's undersized, but he uses his body, and that rim there sort of shields his shot so Shelton can't block it. Here's Johnson for three, short. Loving flying through the air for the rebound. Whelan again out in front. Washington out to Anacoya for three. Back iron. Sayers back to Peel into Shelton. Shelton spinning, uh, using his feet well. And that's what they miss. Shelton having an extended period in the, on the bench in the first half. You want high efficient shots in and around the rim where your team aren't shooting the ball well. And he was someone they couldn't go to because he was missing from the floor. Uh, McKenzie loses his feet, turns the ball over. His peel in transition, and he lays it in for two. You talk about attitude and response, Drew, and good sequence of events there from the Eagles. And you want them to finish strong, as you say, because they, they're a team that, that they still need to grow, they still need to get better. And it's games like this where, okay, maybe the, the game at hand is gone, but you're still building for the future. Yeah, exactly right. A, a team that obviously needs to continue to grow, needs chemistry. So every minute together in a competitive environment is needed so no time wasted you got to play to the final buzzer he says again in the corner misses everything and ends up as a pass straight to peel I mean, in a positive spin as well for the newcastle eagles they played number one and number two in best defensive points conceded so the teams that allow the least amount of points the bristol flyers and leicester riders and tonight they've scored more than 55 wow. small wins that's a very <laughs> small win <laughs> Ball. 
But like you mentioned, in order for the Newcastle Eagles to get on track, they just have to get a couple of these guys going. You know, Wes Persons in particular, Kyle Williams, you know, guys like that. Brandon Pill, as you just mentioned. And Whelan knocks down the triple. 14 points now for him. And that's the thing. The Leicester Riders won't feel sorry for you when you're trying to figure these things out and trying to work it out. The Leicester Riders are going to keep doing what they do. And a coin with the help, knocking the ball loose. Great help defense. Ooh, behind the back, it went over, loving Ted. In towards Adekoya, and a nice pass. Timeout has been called by the Newcastle Eagles. With 5.45 on the clock, they are 30 points down. And it's just a nice bit of defense from Adekoya. And then a slash to the basket and a good pass for two. It just looks like a team that are comfortable playing with one another on both ends of the floor. They're playing for each other. And just at that point there, Mark Loving could just shoot that ball, right? He's got, he's blitzed his half. He's got 12 points, but he doesn't do that. He lets him make the right play, passes the ball inside for a higher uh, percentage shot at a corner with a layup finish. And you use that dog and bone analogy earlier and, and this Leicester Ryder team, they just look hungry. And we've gotten the opportunity to see the London Lions and they look really strong, but this Leicester Ryder team, they don't have the distractions that the London Lions have. So, you know, before the Lions can focus on the league, I could see the Lions having two or three losses where this is the Leicester Riders' last league game before the new year. So, obviously, they're going to go into the new year 6-0, feeling good about themselves. The only thing that could hurt them is the break, obviously. Well, they were meant to be playing on Sunday, and that game's now been uh, called off. As you say, it's one of those weird things in the schedule. I think we're going to have to get used to it, uh, certainly for the next month or so. Well, they make their way back out onto court. I guess, I mean, Nat talked about it right at the, t at the top of the show. Which Newcastle Eagles will we see tonight? The one that we saw against, uh, against London a couple of weeks ago, the one we saw against... Uh, Sheffield, the one we saw against Bristol, they're, they're so up and down and it's not a team, a club, a franchise that we're used to, to seeing like that and as Williams drives in and leaves it short, gets it back second attempt, eventually they score. True, I obviously, you're the Newcastle guy so I, I put this towards you. How do you weigh up the, the team that beats London, wins the triple overtime game on the road and then scores 55 at home and is 30 points down on the road the next week. Well, you mentioned about which team is going to show up. I, I think for me, I'm just confused. I mean, I, I, I don't even think they know which team is going to show up week in and week out, which is unfortunate because we saw the best version is they look like one of the best teams in the league 14 days ago against the London Lions, and then you see the performance tonight. You see the performance against the Bristol Flyers. And, you know, it's a really tough position to be in as a ball club when you're so up and down like a yo-yo. But they got to get it fixed quick, fast, in a hurry. The record is them 4-4 four four they'll be after this game, and that is the Newcastle Eagles at the, at the moment now. Where I would say that the positive is is that we have seen brilliance. That, so that tells me that their, their potential is huge. You know, the, the, what they put on London Lions December 3rd, earlier this month, was, 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 a, was a phenomenal display, both ends of the floor. Wow. But how do you follow that up? As, as, as Drew says, two weeks later, with 55 points and all right, they'll get to 70 or whatever it is here. But Leicester are going to go past 100. It, you know, you can't play like that. Well, you talk about potential, man. Potential as a 17-year-old getting drafted into the NBA. you got time to wait. <laughs> Not for a pro club, you know. So the, the question is, is, is how long do you wait on that potential to show up on a week-to-week -week basis? How much patience does Ian McLeod have with this potential roster? Is there a shakeup incoming? We just don't know. It's a lot of questions revolving around the Newcastle Eagles. Here's Wheeler. There's not too many questions around Leicester, that's for sure. Here's Loving. Well, he had a, a hot spell of about four or five minutes in the third quarter, but either side of that, he's not really 
shot the ball the efficient way he, we've seen him in his BBL career so far. His person strengths the three. Well, someone who's eaten up himself. It's two for four now from the three point line. 12 points personal for Wes Parsons. They're going to need him to, to do this now on a more consistent basis and do it earlier in games so that Eagles aren't always chasing the game. And the boy, good ball move. Love it. Rebound again on the offensive glass, Leicester. So many offensive rebounds, and they get some second chance points from McKenzie. That's really good work there from Jabril Adekoya to keep that ball alive. And Kimball McKenzie's done a really good job there. It's difficult circumstances for him being introduced into this game in the fourth quarter, but seems to have grown into the game. Where's Person again getting some more points on the board? 15 second chance points for Leicester, 21 points from turnovers. Those are the things that really kill you. Whelan for three. McKenzie with the offensive rebound. There's two more second chance points. Wow, he just skied above everyone else there. And that's just Will. And what in the ball more than the next guy? Because he's given up a lot of size there. And Goodness me, good put back from Kimball McKenzie. Wholesale substitutions for the Leicester Riders. Greg Wilde, Louis Jordan into the game for the first time. Darren Nelson Henry going to get an extra couple of minutes here at the end as well. Sheltered with the runner off the mark, Washington with the rebound. Nelson Henry out to McKenzie for three. Williams has it, Person's gone. And Person throws it off the glass and jammed in by Shelton. Wow, nice play there and nice little highlight there for the Eagles. Nelson Henry, nice cut to the basket for McKenzie and another Good assist for the big man. Beautiful there, and Kimball McKenzie showing us what he can do. Perfectly timed cut there, and again, Nelson Henry showing us his vision. And it's three doesn't go. Jordan with the rebound. All the rings out at the morning side as the Leicester fans get themselves ready for celebrating a victory. Here's Jordan for three and he stares it down. The young man knocks down a triple. It was contested and Jordan had that confidence before he caught the ball, knocked it down. Well, they really enjoyed that. Seeing the young lad still at college. But playing some minutes here at the end and getting himself a big bucket. I got him to break the 100 mark too, Dan. You know the fans love the 100 yeah, mark. Yeah, true, true. Whether there's three hot dogs involved or not. <laughs> well, they're on their feet here for the last few seconds at the Morningside Arena. Defoe's going to just dribble it out here. I think he's going to take the 24-second violation, is he? Yeah, he is. Well, he does take the 24 second violation. And uh, they just want to get out of here, Newcastle Eagles. Time will expire. Leicester remain undefeated in the league with a comprehensive victory over their old rivals, the Newcastle Eagles. 101 72. We thought there was a glimpse there of hope for this Newcastle Eagles team down at the start of that second half, but that wasn't meant to be. It was a very short-lived run because the new because uh, the Leicester Riders restored order. They were the better team at both ends of the floor, and I thought they had that mental discipline there to, to, to see out their little little period of, of, of adversity. Well, Gino Crandall barely played in the second half. He did all the damage in the in the first half. They didn't really need him that much. He ends up only playing 20, 
four minutes, but Leicester got it from lots of different places. You look down the down the list. Gina had 22, Loving had 14, Walker had 12, Whelan had 14, Jackson had 10, Adekoya had 10. So many guys in double figures. Six players in double digits, and you know you even got Kimball McKenzie coming off the, the the bench there. Seven points personal for him as well. And you're right, Dan. It was a, it was a a period of, there wasn't a period of this game where you put any one player and was took over for any long period of time you know and they all contributed in their own way well the guy who did take over in the first half was Gino Crandall he is courtside with Drew you know a great win tonight the league champs just seem to get it done week in and week out what's the recipe to this team's success um you know I think it's a lot of selflessness honestly I think that's where it starts I think we have guys who are you know um not afraid to let somebody else have the shine I think um at times when you have guys that are really good at basketball um you can kind of take too much pride in that you know and, and if you're hot you want to keep it going you know if you're having a bad one you want to try and get yourself going whereas I think we have guys that good or bad we just kind of stay the course we get it done together um you know and a lot of times it, it shows when things are bad I think we're a team that has been fine playing from behind the team that's been fine playing in close games um and I Obviously, a team that's, that's fine when, when it's rolling like it was tonight. So. And Mr. Do It All tonight, 22, 4 and 4 in just 24 minutes. What have you added to your game where you're coming off an MVP season? Yeah, um, you know, I've just tried to improve as um, as a shooter, honestly. I think that was probably one weakness in my game last year, especially dealing with some, some wrist problems in my shooting hand. And so just grind it out on getting better at that this summer. And I think it's been able to make me more dynamic scoring the ball, which I think makes it a little bit easier to do everything else because I'm drawing more attention in that sense. And at 6 0 this season, would you say the Leicester Riders are the team to beat? Yeah, yeah. If, if there's anybody that disagrees, um, you know, I would, I would tell them, look at last year's championship result um, and then consider that we probably have a better, more talented team than we had last year. Love the confidence. Great win, Gino. Yeah, thank you. Confidence is justified because it was another brilliant performance from the reigning MVP. And as he was saying in that chat with Drew, shooting something he's been working on in the offseason season. And that really came to four tonight. 61% from the court, including five of nine from downtown Crandall. As Dan said in commentary right at the end there, did most of the damage in the first half. And Mike Tuck, it was more than enough. This game was pretty much done by the half, wasn't it? Oh, 100%, I think. Uh, and that's something we talked about with the Eagles. They, they didn't show up from the beginning, and Gino just took 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 uh, advantage of that. You know, what a performance from him. You know, getting steals, getting dunks in transition, creating for other guys, and then those five huge threes, you know, and a big one in transition, two big ones in transition. So, you know, big night from Gino. Pretty big night for the Riders. Pretty much every statistical category there, they dominated. Assist 26 to 16. Look at that rebound number, 46 to 31, Mike. Yeah, and you typically the team that wins the rebound war is, is going to have an easier road to get the W, and, and obviously the Riders wanted it more tonight. As you mentioned at halftime in particular, look at that second number on the screen. 19 offensive re rebounds to the Eagles. Nine, once again, the Riders' strength in depth showing as well. 29 bench points, just the 15 for the Eagles and look at that crucial number 21 points from turnovers yeah points from turnovers is huge you know you've got to take care of the ball uh, when you're playing at this level and, and you know the Newcastle Eagles possessions are important you know they're not scoring a lot, a lot of points and they need those points so you have to keep the ball in your possession the champs laying down a marker let's hear from their head coach Rob Padanoska coach 6-0 in the league Gino talked about the selflessness of this team how is this team so consistent week in and week out well we got pros here I think that's what we knew from uh, day one you know you bring these guys in they're professional about everything uh, everybody is all about the team and um, you know you love to coach and you love to come to practice every day with these kind of guys and then you, know, you put that with some talent because these guys got talent as well and you can see how we've had a good start and talk about your defense you hold teams to 76 points you held Newcastle to 72 how were you able to neutralize this high power offense well great commitment on that end of the floor no question about it guys that buy in but you know scouting is important too you know Pablo Vasquez our assistant coach does a great job with that and the guys really buy into it they really get into what the other teams are doing and when we go in the film room it's not just me talking it's everybody talking and the guys are um, the kind of group that are intelligent committed and uh, when you have that kind of talent on that end of the floor you're gonna be tough to stop 
10 and 1 without him. Now you add last year's Moten Team of the Year and Nelson Henry. What does he add to this juggernaut? He adds a lot. I think, uh, you know, with, the, with Darian, he's a scorer. He can score the ball, passes the ball so well. And, you know, when you got another 6'10, 6'11 guy coming in there, you know, that combination with Mo is definitely tough. Um, and I think Darian's still got a lot to give. You know, he's just coming back. But, um, yeah, guys are really excited to have him back on the floor. Thanks for your time. Great performance, coach. Thank you. We talked at the top of the show uh, about the Riders' win against the Lions in the Cup, which, of course, is better than losing a game. But the way that the game played out, the Lions clawing back 23 points to keep it really tight going to the second leg, we figured Coach Paternostro was not going to be thrilled about that performance. And he got a real response from his team today. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, a win is a win. But that fourth quarter in the Lions game, you know, showed maybe some of their flaws and, and things that they have to work on. So this is a team that goes away. They do their homework. You know, you saw them just talk about it. And, and I think as a group, they look like a pretty high IQ team that, that, that play for each other, like Gino, like Gino referenced. So when you've got an unselfish team like that, that that's playing, you know, really smart basketball, they're going to be a tough team, tough team to stop. And, you know, for me, I'm mad at the Eagles tonight, man. We need somebody to give these guys a loss. I'm, I'm sick of seeing these guys at the top. Yeah, I, it's interesting what you say about the, the Riders having flaws, because based on what we saw tonight, I can't see too many of them. In that Lions game, what did you pick out and, and work that you think Coach Paternostro would have looked at to concentrate on? I think the speed of the game at, towards the end worked more in the Lions' favor. I think that the Riders got a little bit too sped up and they were a little bit out of control. Um, and, you know, uh, careless turnovers and, and things of that nature so i think tonight we saw a more balanced attack in the first half although they were they were gunning in transition and, and, and playing at a, at a high pace but they were also slowing it down they were moving the ball you know you had everybody touching the ball before a good shot from the corner and the spacing that, that's one of the, their biggest strengths is their spacing they certainly got contributions from uh, across not just the starting five but uh from the bench as well mark loving was a player that we talked about at the top, 14 points, 7 assists, 8 re rebounds. He was close to our MVP, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we talked about him a bunch, and I think in that second half when, when Gino kind of sat down, Mark, Mark Lovin was a guy that really stepped up, and, you know, he's a guy who averages, you know, 17 points a game, 18 points a game, so he's not he's not one to be scared to, to take a shot, and, God, that was an extremely difficult shot from him right there, so he's a guy who can step up at any moment. And he went on uh, a couple of runs, and uh, as the Riders did throughout, and the Eagles didn't really seem to have any chance uh, any response i should say to to hit back that was something that drew talked about in commentary which is unusual for the eagles that when they are hit by an 8.10 point, point run typically they dig deep but they weren't able to do that tonight no and i think you know some of it was the ball just wasn't dropping in their favor we saw a few a few shots just rolling out but other times they just were not in sync and not sticking with their offense i think you know weeks we saw the ball coming up the floor one pass and then a quick shot which which really deflates you as a team especially if you miss that shot because then nobody's touched the ball and and, and nobody has a chance to get in rhythm and get in form so i think for the eagles they, they just got to go away get back to the drawing board really start playing for each other start playing team basketball that that's that's what the eagles do the best all right let's hear from their head coach ian mcleod he's caught cyber drew Hey, Coach, tough loss tonight. The Riders seem to get what they want offensively, and it seemed to be a lack of ball movement from the Eagles. What's your take on tonight's performance? Uh, I think you pretty much nailed it there. I mean, uh, defensively, 27, 27, and 26. That was the first three quarters. How many points we conceded is just it's really unacceptable, to be honest. I mean, we didn't take anything away. We weren't physical enough. Um, there was only 10 foul shots shot in the game. Someone puts 101 points on you, at least make them shoot 20 foul shots and earn it. Um, I don't think it was a scheme point of view. I just think we need to be tougher defensively. Um, and then two fast break points. If you're not doing those things and giving up uh, a lot of baskets, it's very difficult to get out the other way to supplement your offense. Um, and in that, uh, in that deflation kind of took us away from what we were doing offensively a little bit as well. And at 5'11 this season, with the talented roster, What's been the most frustrating thing for you as a coach to this slow start to the season? Uh, I mean, there's a lot we can write off, but the most frustrating thing is you go on, we have a great weekend, you know, whatever it was, 10 days ago or, you know, two weeks ago. Um, we beat London at home. We, we show some real quality there. We show some toughness. Um, we show toughness to go and win an imperfect game at Cheshire in triple overtime. And then we kind of hand two, not hand, Leicester have been very good tonight. We didn't hand this game away, but certainly the Bristol game. Um, and it, it, it's stuff we've done. It's stuff we've showed we can do. It's not delivering a consistency is, is the biggest frustration. And a game on the 28th to close out 2021. What's got to change in order to see a better version of the Eagles in 2022? 
urgency, physicality. Um, it's got to come from within. It's got to come from within. We can, you know, we can run different offences, that's irrelevant. Um, it's about the defensive end primarily, then the rebounding side of the, the, side of the game. Um, but physicality is the biggest one and, and it, it needs to be a spark. We need to look at ourselves individually and as a collective and find a spark there. And it's tough after a 29-point loss, but what positives can you take out of tonight? I mean, it, it is difficult. At this moment, it, it, it's easy to think of the positives, you know, an, an hour later. But right now, you're thinking about, you know, it, what did we not do? You know, that, that's, the, that's the kind of the thing that's right in front of us right now. Hey, we're back on the court. We're playing basketball. Great. <laughs> that's, that's about the positive I'm thinking right now. Um, but it's also maybe it's highlighted for what we need, what we need for the rest of the year. You know, if, if we're looking OK and scraping wins now, maybe we don't look at ourselves so intently. So maybe it's a chance to turn the magnifying glass on ourselves a bit. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you. Gracious in defeat. And we've got to remember this is a, a team of champions, right? And Mike, you've been there. You've been in a winning team with a winning mentality. When you play a game like this, particularly as Coach Max said, off the back of a brilliant performance last time we saw them a couple of weeks back against a title contender like the Lions... What's the mood in the camp like right off the back of it the next day in terms of how you rebound from a performance like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, after after a big win like that, it, it's, it's got to be encouraging and, you know, the, the mood in camp will be good. But, you know, you see what the game they had against Bristol last week, I think that kind of trickled into today. Um, and, and, you know, once we saw Shelton go out early in the game, the energy just dipped immediately, and I think that's the biggest. That's the big thing for them. There's the defensive intensity has got to be there. I think on the other end, you look at Leicester. They did a really good job on defense, and especially on Fletcher. You know, they they, they took him out the game. Um, he still had, had about ten points, but mm. they did a good job of taking him out the game. And then the only really other shining light for for the Eagles tonight was was Corey Johnson. Well, let's look at Corey Johnson in a moment. Patrick Whelan's one of the Rowdies players that we wanted to talk about because, as you said at the top of the show, Mike, he's been in red hot form 14 more points for him tonight 35 court minutes as well yeah you know great local talent kid love love to see it uh, you know, had a great career in spain and now and now he's here and he's really shining in these last couple games i think you know really taking off and tonight 14 more points in this second half got a bit more opportunity out there they left him out there because of the, such a big lead and, and he really took advantage of it and he, he's a guy's a little bit of a, a Swiss Army knife can can knock down threes, but he's also you know pretty strong and, and a good slasher getting to the basket. So it was great to see him take over tonight. We saw the bench points. We saw the, the range of scoring from a number of the riders. It's something we seem to talk about every season: the strength and depth with this Leicester roster. But it's also the vision, the cohesion, the philosophy that Coach Paternostra has running through this team. Everybody's very clear about the kind of ball they need to play. Yeah, and I think that's that that's a testament to, to the coaching staff and, and, and um, the tone that they set immediately. And then, you know, when you bring back core players like Nelson Henry and like Gino Crandall, who play at a high level and set the standard for these guys every day, you know, we looked at Nelson Henry talking about, I just want to be an example for these guys. You know, I just want to go out there and, and set the tone and I want to go out and work hard every day and show up for work every day. So that's, that, that's a great attitude to have when, when, when you're playing basketball and, th and that's the type of, you know, captain that you want to have on your team. You know, a guy that sets the tone holds guys accountable, and then goes out there and has fun. You know, this Leicester Rider team looks like, you know, they're a serious team, but they're having fun out there as well. Well, Gino certainly talked a, a big game in his chat with Drew. Do you think they are the team to beat? I mean, clearly the Lions will have a, a say in that. Is there daylight between those two and everybody else right now in terms of how the season has started? Well, hey, you can't, can't forget about my Sharks. You know, we're, we're, of course, the we're, Sharks We're, as we're well. right there, right Second behind. on the table. But, um, you know, obviously they're, they're starting to separate themselves right now. Um, you know, we're coming up to, to the festive break here. We're coming up to the halfway point in the season. But realistically, it's still pretty early. There's still a lot of basketball to play within the championship. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a tough one to tell. But obviously, the Riders, they're undefeated right now. So, you know, nobody can really say anything about that to them. Um, so, but time will tell. Time will tell. You know, we, we, we still a lot of basketball to play. We're looking forward to playing them again. Um, you know, you never know how it's going to pan out towards the end of the season. Yeah, we don't want an overreaction and getting too carried away, but it is formidable from uh, the Riders. Jekyll and Hyde once again from the Eagles. You mentioned Corey Johnson. He was the brightest spark for them tonight, wasn't he? Yeah, definitely. I think he he came in and kind of played a little bit fearless um, and, and was able to, to get knock down some shots and get some stuff going early. And like we said, you know, he played here last year, so this is going to be a big game for him on, on, on the calendar. He's going to X this one off. He's, he's comfortable here. He's practiced on this court. He's played big games on this court. And, uh, you know, it, it, that, it makes it such a lot easier when, when, when you're coming into a gym and, and, and you know what the atmosphere is going to be like. You know what the, the court is going to feel like. 
I think he did a really good job for them. It's just unfortunate that all the other guys couldn't get going. He's got a, a winning mentality, obviously, he's bringing into this side. We know Defoe, we know Fletch. These are guys that have won it all time and time again. So what are those vets going to be saying in the locker room to everybody else right now? It's going to be a frustrating time right now, especially when you lose back-to-back -back games like that. But I think the biggest thing is to start focusing on the positives. And, and you, you got to look at that London Lions game and then the triple overtime game versus Cheshire. you got to look at games like that and just say, listen, we have it in us. You know, We're, we're, we're not a, you know, a group of chumps or anything like that. We, we've got a good group here. We've got the pieces to do it. But I think it's mentally for them, they've got to start putting it together. You know, you've got to show up every day ready to go. You know, you, you got to show up at the beginning of the games and not go down to 10, 15 point deficit. So those are, those are the biggest things for me, coming in with a strong mental attitude and focusing on the positives. We've spoken to Coach Mack a few times off the back of difficult performances, spoke to him off the back of brilliant performances like the one against the Lions. When it was the former, when it was a performance he didn't want to see from his team, he's talked about the, a lack of intensity, this lack of energy. In terms of what we saw tonight, it seemed to be more of the same, given what he was explaining to Drew then about why he think the performance didn't go to plan. Why are we seeing that quite erratic inconsistency in terms of the, the energy and drive from the Eagles right now? It, it just feels like the, the mental toughness isn't there, and there's, there's times where they switch off, and I think that um, it's, it's a little bit of a snowball effect with them. If one thing goes wrong, it's not just that one thing that they can bounce back from. It's like three things in a row go wrong. So if you, you know, have a turnover or let them get an offensive rebound, Rebound. You know, we saw in one possession they had three offensive rebounds in a row. So right. those are those are. It's just like tiny little things like that that they they've got to start locking in on in practice. And you know, it, it starts with the coaching staff and, and it starts with those vets on the team. They got to start setting the tone in there uh, a little bit better. And I, and I know it can be frustrating at times, but you got to start laying down the law and having some serious conversations with guys and just being honest with each other. Well, Corey Johnson and Patrick Reed and the last two players we saw there in analysis were mic'd up this evening on court. Let's hear how the game played out from their perspective. Let's go, Lance, let's go. Take mine, take mine. Weave, weave. Hey. You knew I wasn't a foul, bro. You went like that after the layup in my arm. Hey, it was too hard. Triangle. Five, 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 five. Switch it, switch it. I'm mic'd up, I can't tell you. Flare to flare. Screen to screen to flare. Dunk that. Yes, sir. You start different. You start different. It's okay, it's okay. Oh! He just pushed it. Punk that low. Punk that low. Disappointed to see no. Uh, Sky Sports baby, Mike Tuckstar, but if you trademark that. That's, yeah, it's copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what Whelan was saying when he said, oh, I'm mic'd up, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you will never know. Uh, play of the day, no surprise. Who has won this one? Gino Crandall, though, we had quite a few to pick from, Mike. Oh, 100%, you know, he was doing a little bit of everything in the first half, but this play just stood out to me. He had hit two shots previous to this, so his confidence was high coming down the court. He saw a little bit of light. Not much there. Williams with the hand in his face, but he was about seven feet back from the three-point line there. What a shot from Gino Crandall. He mentioned it in his interview with Drew. We talked a bit about it earlier on in the show. Just how improved has his shooting become based on what you've seen this season? Yeah, well, I think uh, one of the things, you know, he, he had a hand injury last season mm. that, we, that we really talk about. So maybe, you know, he, he was shying away from, from that aspect of his game. Um, but, you know, he's... That he's the magician. He's got a little bit of everything. I, th I think his biggest strength is is getting to the mid range, switching speeds, and creating for himself and creating for others. And then you got to talk about he's a point guard, and look how athletic he is. He's finishing above the rim on on multiple plays in a game. So that that's very rare for for a point guard. Um, but yeah, the the shooting now is just a, a bigger asset and something that, that that's added there. You know, if if we were scouting him up before this season started, we would have said just to, to play off of him, you know, let him have the open shot rather than the drive. But now you got to watch out for everything. You saw how he pulled up in transition. That, right it's there. a great point you make, actually, because when he burst onto the scene last year, he blew us all away. With a year in the tank and all of that game film, how has scouting Gino changed from uh, somebody who plays against him? Well, I mean, you, you just you just got to, you know, see what, what aspects of his game he's added to. And obviously the shooting is, is one thing and, Trying, trying to get him away from from the areas on the court where he's comfortable. So he really likes uh, uh, snake dribbling off off screens and, and getting to the middle of the paint. 
Um, but it's it's tough. If, if you looked at a shot chart of him, you know, he's knocking down shots from all over the place, especially this season from from the beyond the arc. So um, it's a point now where, you know, he's going to get his in a game if you're scouting him. So you can't be angry at that, but try and take away everything else that they have. All right. Uh, brilliant performance from Gino and the Riders. And of course, they're in contention on multiple fronts in the BBL this season. We referenced their cup semi-final victory against the Lions. Three points the margin in the end as we talked about it was uh, 23 at one stage but the Lions clawing that back. Look at that December the 30th the rematch Mike. That's an almost impossible one to call isn't it? Uh, yeah it's 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 going to be a great game you know obviously uh, down in, in London this time and uh, it's exciting because the London Lions, you know, they saw a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel towards that end one. So that's going to give them confidence going into this one. Whereas the Riders, you know, they, they're still in fine form right now. A big win against the Eagles uh, tonight. So it, it's a tough one to call. We'll see. But all this little time off, you know, a few Christmas meals. I don't know. <laughs> it could pan out either way. Well, we've got to give uh, a shout out to the Manchester Giants as well. Brilliant performance from them. When the Rocks looked like they had it in the bag, but the Giants didn't want to let go. No, definitely not. And it, it's great to see that uh, organization kind of turn a corner a, as a whole and, and get back to a final. You know, the, I think the last time we saw them in a, fi in a cup final was in uh, 99 or 2000 against my Sheffield Sharks. So um, huge achievement for them. Great to see them after the new ownership came in, turning a corner, making a final. Yeah, it was slightly before your time, right? I'm guessing you were playing. Oh, it? come on now. <laughs> I know, I got gray hair. I'm not that old. I'm though. trying to do my maths <laughs> in my head. Dan Clark as well, uh, who we saw, of course, live on Sky Sports last week. A brilliant addition to the BBL, the Team GB captain this season. Brilliant that we're going to see him in the cup final. Yeah, I think it's 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 great. You know, he's he's a household name within British basketball. He's a homegrown player, you know, a British kid, and and uh, he's come back to the league and obviously a huge signing for the Manchester Giants. So it's it's exciting to see him back here, bringing a little bit more energy, a little bit more attention to the British game, and and you know, leading his team to a final immediately. Well, that is the game we've got coming up for you in the new year. There's going to be more Dan Clark. There's going to be more Gino Crandall. There's going to be plenty more BBL coming your way after the Christmas break. Trying to force it inside for three. Oh! Nice pass, and Jacob able to jam it home. Evans for three. WBBO Cup champions of the Leicester Riders and the Newcastle Eagles are the 2021 BBL Cup champions. Yeah, the BBL and the WBBL Cup final coming up in the new year here on Sky Sports. We're taking a Christmas break, but our next league game sees two teams that we haven't seen yet this season. Plymouth taking on Surrey January the 14th. 7 p.m. on air, 7.30 tip as ever. Hope you've enjoyed tonight, Mike Tuck. I hope you have as well. Keep away from too many uh, Christmas meals because you've got a lot of work to get done. <laughs> Great to see you from all of us here on Sky Sports BBL. Have a wonderful Christmas and we'll see you in the new year. favorite thing about Christmas is giving, the giving part. I mean, you're lying if you don't say presents, right? I don't care too much about gifts. It's more about the, the atmosphere of everyone just enjoying each other's company and space. Getting all the presents, you know. I'm not only child, so I get all the presents. And just being able to get some presents for my son. Also, just see what my wife's going to get me as well. Seeing everybody's face when they get gifts. Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas. The best thing about Christmas is definitely the food. Just getting the family together and eating good food. The movies, you know, I can't wait to watch like Home Alone, Frost, Jingle All The Way, all the movies. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas from all of us here at the BBL. See you in the new year.